Of all of the ways to die, Hunter x Hunter has some of the absolute worst. Reading the series is often like walking through a beautiful lush landscape, absolutely littered with deep, dark person-sized holes that one can fall into at any given moment without warning. Tagashi has used Hunter x Hunter to explore the very depths of human darkness, not only by inserting actual real-world atrocities into the series, but Tagashi himself has become quite adept at inventing his own exceptionally gruesome ways to die. There are some times in this series where I feel like I'm watching some sort of serial killer documentary instead of a shonen series? And that leaves me with one big question. Who had the worst death in all of Hunter x Hunter? Well, stop one on our death discovery train is any victim of Nanika, known more technically as the Dark Continent Calamity Eye. Those who fall victim to its powers are squashed and twisted until a state of death has been achieved, and done so with such force that it leaves human bodies looking like wet towels after a particularly bloody shower. I would say that Nanika's numerous victims are easily the most visceral deaths in the series, but there is a saving grace for the victims, which is that death is pretty much instantaneous. So the true horror of this experience is felt more so by those who discover the remains, many of which are kept in a super secret facility that studies various dark continent related phenomena. And in particular, victims of eye are described as quote, things that used to be human. There is a potential bonus element of horror here that might completely flip my perspective though, which is that these remains are kept in sort of stasis tubes, offering up the potential that maybe the victims are somehow still alive in these tubes. Thankfully, that is mercifully unlikely because the Zoldics do specifically refer to Nanika's victims as being dead and honestly, lucky them because there is a whole laundry list. Laundry is a pun because Nanika brings victims like a towel. There is a whole laundry list of worse ways to go out in Hunter x Hunter. One of which would be having the unfortunate fate of crossing paths with the Phantom Troops' Fatan. Because as adorable, funny, and often flat out cool as he is, Fatan is one of the people that I would never want to run into in any world. Fatan genuinely enjoys inflicting pain on others. Probably learned from the hundreds and thousands of hours of snuff films that he would have watched whilst attempting to find Sarasa's murder tape. And he takes a very clinical approach to his work, a sort of torture min maxa. Fatan's goal is to keep a person alive as long as possible. So for example, when Nobunaga was potentially about to break Gon's arm, Fatan interjected. He said, no, Nobunaga, no. Before you break the arm, you first break the fingers. And before you break the fingers, you first extract the fingernails. With this in mind, I ultimately feel incredibly sorry for the York New Auctioneer because even Uvagin said that Feitan worked him over good. And by the end of the process, even Feitan himself felt sorry for his victim. We don't know the specifics and in many ways that makes it worse because the imagination is limitless. And this may well be one of the most painful ways to die in the series. But even if that is the case, I'm far from sure that this is the worst way. Also, this fictional hunter content is sponsored by Pocket Champs, a spectacularly vibrant and fun free to play game on Android or iOS, where you get the opportunity to coach your champ and unlock its true potential. It's like Rocky with adorable characters. Actually, Rocky isn't a very modern reference anymore. It's like Creed with adorable characters. And so it's up to you to strategize and discover the best race strategy. And after that, like any good trainer, you trust your champ to win, sit back and watch as glory is delivered directly to your doorstep. Along with memorable characters, a ton of collectibles, consistent new content, the thing I love most about this game is the rich, vibrant universe. As a longtime Shona manga fan, this sleek, simple, and just plain fun world really appeals to me. Also, I've partnered with Pocket Champs to offer you guys a starter pack with 500 gems plus a white wolf skin. Just click the link in the description or scan the QR code to download Pocket Champs, and these rewards will be automatically added to your account on November 1st, 2023. So genuinely, thank you so much to Pocket Champs for sponsoring this video. In doing so, they are directly supporting my ability to pay my fantastic artists and channel editors. But above all, again, it's just a really fun game. So go download it, but for now it's back to you, me. To contrast this, we have the intrinsically terrifying indoor fish, a Nen ability categorically designed for painless torture. Now you might be thinking that doesn't make sense. The purpose of torture is to inflict pain. Well, not necessarily. And I guess think of it this way. Feitan's process is designed to extract information and increasing pain is the tool which he uses to achieve that. Meanwhile, the user of indoor fish wants nothing except the suffering of their target. These are Nen beasts that can only exist in closed rooms. They are carnivorous fish who dine exclusively on human flesh, and whilst being devoured, the victims do not bleed, nor do they feel any pain whatsoever. And I, that, I don't know, man. Watching your body being gradually eaten, perfectly aware of what's
what's happening sounds like a whole new level of existential horror. Less physical pain, but significantly more terror. And the victim is essentially immortal until the indoor fish are deactivated, at which point the victim is finally permitted to die. So in theory, you could keep someone in this state for as long as you yourself are willing to remain in the closed room. But torture isn't exclusively a human device. The chimera ants Yunju and Mosquito had a particularly disturbing hobby of keeping a series of human pets. Said pets were collared, forced to be naked, and even taught to walk on their elbows. Legitimately one of the most disturbing things I've seen in Hunter x Hunter, potentially media in general. Because one of those quote pets was so psychologically broken that by the end of it, he believed he was a dog. In this case, the most merciful aspect of the process was the actual death, which was a quick stomp on the head, but it's more so everything leading up to that, which cements this as one of the most unpleasant fates in the series. With Chimera Ants in particular though, we can definitely do one better, and all I need to do is say one word. Pockle. This is when Hunter x Hunter absolutely floored me. The moment where this series switched from a shonen with a bit of a streak of darkness into full on body horror. And it's not just about how Pockle died, but the events leading up to it. Pockle was able to survive the initial poisoning by Zazan, quite luckily due to a hidden antidote. However, I dare say that this was the unluckiest thing that could have possibly happened. Because eventually Pockle found himself in a desperate situation where he was hiding within a mountain of remains deep, deep, deep within the Chimera Ant lair. I really can't imagine what was going through his mind in these last moments, but the word hopeless comes to mind. Just as Pockle was swiftly discovered and Pito came to his mind. Quite literally, as Pito lobotomized Pockle to find out everything he knew about Nen. He was also stripped naked, and you might be wondering why, that, that seems a bit unnecessary. Well, it wasn't actually, and it was in preparation for Pockle's finale. This was considered too brutal to be shown in the anime, but in the manga, after Pito is finished, Pockle is immediately butchered by pig and fed to the ant queen. So stripping Pockle was the equivalent of preparing one's food by removing the packaging. It's unknown exactly how much of this Pockle was consciously aware of or felt. It could be some, it could be all, it could be none. But regardless, this is easily one of the most undesirable deaths in a series full of exceptionally brutal ways to die. But even then, honestly, the chimera ants are far from the worst. In fact, this next death doesn't even come from a Nen user. At the commencement of York New City, Karap Pika entered a building known as the Flesh Collector's Mansion. And this is our first real introduction to body part collecting, a truly gruesome hobby that only the wealthiest people in this world have the means and lack of humanity to participate in. The Flesh Collector himself is Light Nostrad, and the most memorable piece in his collection is the man in the painting, a former bodyguard who put the family in danger, and as punishment, was turned into a one-of-a-kind collector's piece, hung within the mansion's walls as a warning for all other bodyguards. So the thing that really gets me about this is how well Togashi portrays the look of sheer terror on his face, as well as the contorted body. Like you can see that he was struggling to get free right up to the very second that he was covered in he, well, he was covered in whatever it is, resin, maybe? But again, this is another one of those methods which isn't the most painful, but certainly is one of the more terror-inducing, and all for the sake of art. Although Light Nostra does have a contemporary artist that puts even his work to shame. Fourth Prince of the Kharkin Empire, Sarajnik, has dedicated his life to the pursuit of art. However, his art is about more than just the final product. It's about the process and the materials. The materials being people, and the process being about as morbid of a death as you can imagine. And in fact, Sarajnik himself describes it as follows. If I'm skinning pigs and monkeys, it's just dissection. What I seek is art, produced by youth with a future put in an extreme situation, a synthesis of the arts. So in regular language, what Sarajnik aims to do is take people with bright futures and then take that future away from them whilst they're fully aware and in the most extreme situation that Sarajnik can conjure. And rather unfortunately, Sarajnik's imagination is practically limitless. He is a true genius in every sense of the word, but a sinister genius who is never short on inspiration for new works. And in fact, he's one of only two characters in the series who have been described as pure evil. Afterwards, Sarajnik has the remains constructed into the final pieces, often tattooed and framed by his collaborating artist. The scariest thing is that this is what Sarajnik was doing prior to learning Nen. There are no magical powers involved whatsoever in what's happening here. This horror was all the result of pure, realistic human desire. 
Interestingly, Saradnik's tattoo artist may be connected to our next and potentially ultimately unpleasant way to die, which is Saras's murder. Because Saradnik's artist bears a strong resemblance to one of the child snatchers spotted in Meteor City. And after going through all of these, I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to feel a bit desensitized to death in Hunter x Hunter, but even then, this incident hits me hard. There have been victims in this video who have undergone horrific deaths, but knew the risks of their actions like Pockle. This is just the sort of thing that may happen when you're a licensed hunter, or people who were insidious figures themselves and likely responsible for inflicting their own fair share of horrors. But Sarasa was a completely innocent child, an innocent child murdered for the sake of entertainment. This process was videotaped and her remains were left on display as a show for those who found them. So we have yet another case of, I guess, creativity here, but this time in the realm of film. There was no purpose to this beyond pushing the bounds of human cruelty or for the satisfaction of others. What happened to Sarasa was so shocking that her remains and the note left by the killers were kept out of sight from the rest of the Phantom Troop. Although there is some respite because her body was put back together and embalmed by a Nen user named Renko. And you know, in contrast to a lot of these deaths, one of the saddest deaths in the series, Ant King Meruem, looks simply blissful in comparison. Imagine just being able to slowly slip away into eternal sleep with the person you love most by your side. Imagine that, and then let's compare it to the absolute worst way to die in Hunter x Hunter. This is the Kurta clan massacre, and I guarantee that the fate of this poor, poor clan is an order of magnitude worse than you probably remember. What most of you will remember is that the clan were massacred and the Scarlet Eyes harvested from those who possessed them. And that's, that's already pretty bad to be honest, but Togashi decided that he really needed to hammer this one home. In volume zero, we have a two chapter prequel to Hunter x Hunter, following Karapika's backstory up until the moment of the massacre. And whilst Togashi doesn't show what happens for reasons that will become apparent, he does go into some pretty extraordinary written detail. Family members were sat down facing each other. They were stabbed multiple times and had their heads severed while still alive. Pure Kurt clan members had both eyes gouged out. The eyes of outsiders who married into the clan remained, but were squashed. They had sustained more brutal wounds than other members of the clan. It is also believed that the perpetrators mutilated the children more frequently and brutally in front of their parents in order to produce a more vivid scarlet color. A message believed to be from the perpetrators was found near the slain bodies. We'll accept anything you leave, but don't ever take anything away from us. And that's just kind of the world Hunter x Hunter is. Even though this massacre was mostly a business decision, that business emphasized inflicting maximum cruelty for maximum reward. And even though I do personally think this would be the most horrific and undesirable way to die, I can definitely see arguments being made for any method mentioned in this video. So let me know in the comments, what do you think is the worst way to die in Hunter x Hunter? And thanks again to Pocket Champs for sponsoring this video. And you can download the game through the link in the description.